So what have we got going on here? We have the Republicans, which consists of just this state. That's it. And we have the Nashers that control most of the western area of Spain. A little tiny little bit to the east. And then we've got the Carlists just bogged down in the mountains. It's not looking too good. Hey, 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 hey. It's Feedback Gaming. And we're playing some Hearts of Anarchy. You may have heard of anarchy, right? The idea of having a stateless, classless, moneyless society. Some guy wrote a book about it. Might have heard of him. And today we're going to embrace the game over screen. A joke, but I always said if Hoi 4 was to reflect Marxist communism, it would proceed to a referendum and then to a game over screen. Remember, stateless society. And you're probably thinking, how does Marx's view of communism differ from the one today? It was this guy. Blame this guy. It was his fault. Mustache Man 2. Probably as bad as Mustache Man 1. There seems to be a pattern with mustaches. Hmm. Okay, I've had my coffee. It was instant. It was cheap because I'm poor. Hey, have you ever heard of my Patreon? That's right. Ad revenue right now has dried up due to the lockdown situation. If you want to go the extra mile and keep my channel running in these dark times, the link is in the description below. Honestly, I love you. Single player. New game. 1936. We're going to be playing a Spain regular historical Iron Man. <gasps> you can get achievements. Surely that should say you can get achievements. Come on, Paradox. Grammar. Have you ever heard of it? Ugh. Start and let's go. The achievement we are going for today is... Well, I didn't vote for you. Win the Spanish Civil War as the anarchist. So first of all, I'm going to select all of my divisions, assign them to an army, move them to the plane so they suffer less attrition. And at B, right click to railroad. Look, railroad icon, that means they're going really fast. And when they arrive, we're going to exercise them. So hold shift, left click on exercise, and they will exercise automatically level three. It's like magic. Research, we are going to focus on our electronic mechanical engineering so we can get radio. We're going to go for basic machine tools so we get some production going. And a little bit, tiny little bit of construction. Speaking of construction, military factories, we are going to build them in Valencia. You're probably thinking, the home of anarchy is Catalonia, right? Wrong. It has this. Autonomous state, construction speed, minus 25%. Very bad. So we are going to build them in Valencia, which is very close by, which does not suffer from the autonomous state. See, all makes sense now, right? Next up, military factories. We're going to get rid of the support equipment, get rid of all the ships, apart from, oh look, little submarine. Yes, that's right. Make a few of those. Two military factories into the guns and the rest will be into artillery. That is perfect. And the national focus of the gorgantuan Spanish focus tree, we are going to go down the popular front. That's right, boys. For the first time ever, Feedback Gaming is going to be popular. Feels bad, man. Patreon link below. Lol. Uh, we could also select the Air Force 2. It doesn't really matter that much. I'm just going to exercise those to level 3. Move them all to Madrid. And the Navy. Just going to select those. Move them to reserves. Select the reserve G to merge. And then we'll merge them up. Uh, let's see. Somewhere here in the north. We'll use the shore bombardment. And go from there. Hey, look at this. Carlism. Disloyalty. Political violence. National strikes. Oh, it's like we're playing Kaiserreich. Yay. All right, we've done the popular front, and now we are going to go for secure the Guardia Civil. And this gives us access to 10 poorly trained divisions. So lots and lots of small divisions, which we can use to hold the front line. It is a basic choice with who gets the small divisions. To simplify this, this is a choice between do you want a lot of poorly trained divisions or a handful of more well-trained ones. We're going to go with the poorly trained ones. Quantity is quality, right? The Spanish election of 1936. This is the beginning of the Spanish Civil War. So this unlocks two things. One, decisions to postpone the Spanish Civil War. Remember, you're the Republicans, you're the government. Your task is to try and delay the nationalists from firing a coup and firing a civil war. Also, you have control of these decisions of each one of the Spanish states that you will use to resist the nationalists to stop them from flipping these states to their control when the war begins. One strategy that works quite well is to try and bank as much political power as possible. From now on, I will not refer to it as political power. It will be referred to as PP. So, concessions to the left increases the amount of PP by 20%. So we're going to go for these ones as many times as possible. It is important. You need to select one of the decisions every single time it becomes available. A delay of a week means you'll not finish all your focuses, meaning you will start off the Civil War at a major disadvantage. Very important. So, more PP. Go. At the very beginning, you can see these areas here. See this one and this one. The garrisons in these areas are being challenged by the nationalists. So they're moving towards the nationalists. So when the Civil War fires, more of this will become their control at the very beginning. The Republicans haven't got a lot of PP, only 20. The result of this is you can't contest these. And if you do, 
you'll end up with lack of PP, so therefore not able to select the decisions to delay the Civil War, meaning you'll not be able to finish the focus tree, which will cause problems later on. So for now, we're just going to let the Nationalists contest the garrisons, for now. Next research we're going to go for is superior firepower, two days, and next one we're going to go for is more concessions to the left, which gives us an extra 20% more PP per day. That's right, more PP. For anyone who doesn't quite understand, these are all the things that the Nationalists are doing. These are all the things the Republicans are doing. You have control of these ones, but these ones are just letting you know what the opposition is doing. This is the national focus, this one at the top, this middle one is the same one we're going for here, one of these decisions to, in their case, not delay the civil war but speed it up, and the bottom one is them influencing the garrison. Oh look, it highlights, it even shows you what's going on, so it lets you know what they're up to. Awesome, we've secured the garrison. Next one we're going to go for is train the union youth. Train the union youth. Why is that so difficult to say? Alright, next one, more concessions to the left for another 20% more PP. As you can see right now we only have 4 PP. The result of that means that we cannot contest any of these garrisons. If you've contested any of the garrisons right now, unfortunately, you'll not be able to concession to the left or any one of these decisions. The result of that is you will not be able to complete the national focuses for the Republicans, meaning you'll miss out on lots of bonuses. Very bad. Next research, we're going to go for concentrated industry. What? Concentrated? Yep, this is one of those instances where we need to produce as much as we can within a very narrow time frame, and concentrated will work out better because we're not going for that super long game. Once again, concessions to the left is complete, and we're going to go for it again. The Nationalists have gone for a focus now, which gives them control of a large number of garrisons throughout all of Spain. As you can see, look at all these ones here. They're now fully controlled by the Nationalists. All these ones here, and these ones, they've contested themselves. So we have control of the center, as well as Valencia and Catalonia. And these are our main areas, which is actually, conveniently, the same areas where most of the factories are too. Hmm. Next up, enlarge the weapon caches. All right, concessions to the left now is complete. We cannot select again. We have got the most concessions that we can to the left. We have the ability now to imprison Primo de Rivera. The beauty of this one is it gives extra stability. And when we've completed it, it gives a little bit extra political power. And it costs less political power to select it. This is the point where things turn around and we start to gain more political power back. Then we can start contesting some of these garrisons. Okay, he has been imprisoned. Now we can reassign a disloyal leader. Not as good as the others, but we need to keep selecting these because this delays the civil war. We've arrested him, we've gained some more political power, and we've got the option to reassign disloyal leader. And that's the only one we can go for. So let's go for that one now and delay the civil war even more. Okay, so the next two focuses gives 50 political power, gives 75 political power, and gives a total of 200 political power. So lots and lots of political power. At this point, the Republicans can now start contesting the nationalist areas of the map. So we need to secure the northern areas of Spain. That one and this one, these two. When the Nationalists have control of these areas, it allows them to do this national focus, fuse the parties, and this will prevent the Carlist uprising. The Carlists are the monarchists, and if the monarchists don't get fused, they'll break away from the Nationalists and split the civil war into another segment. This is going to be a four-way civil war, and of course, we want to divide up the Nationalists as much as possible to do as much damage to them internally. So that's why we need to control those two areas. Got it? Yeah, got it. Redistribute arms to the people. We are going to start contesting this area garrison in the very north. So this bar represents them trying to take control. And if they get three X's, it means they're full control of this area. And this green bar represents us trying to take back control of the garrison. And as you can see, when this finishes, it will flip to a single tick. And then we're going to click it again, spend political power. And now we're contesting it a second time. We're going to go for concessions to the left. Again, it's because the right side, the opposition, have got more concessions to the right. So push back, back and forth. And there we go. So we need control of this northern area to make sure it's cored. And once again, boost influence to this area once again. And that means this area now will be completely ours at the start of the Civil War. We're going to go for concentrated two as well. Right. To cause the Nationalists as much trouble as possible, what we need to do is divide up their land. So they've got us divided right now. This northern area is secured by us. And this area here, this kind of weird double B shape area, is all going to be our control. So what we need to do is just divide them and split them up. Kind of encircle them. So what we're going to go for is this area here. And this means that all our area will be connected. And one stage is done. One more tick. And then again, stage two. Now we're going to go for secure a leader loyalty. Once again, to delay the civil war even more. The next up and the final one is disband the army and this will fight the civil war and this will give us a massive portion of the army under our control and it also gives us a lovely 200 political power nice and also we're going to push towards that northern section so we have more and more control when the war does begin yeah this focus is going to complete in about 40 days 40 plus 
We've got the option to secure more land. So what I'm going to go for is here, get three ticks. So we want to make sure these areas are completely under our control when the actual war begins. And the final concession to the left, and he's trying to contest this area again, which I'm just going to take it straight back off him. He's got it, take it back. So as you can see now, these areas that are grayed out are fully under control of the government. See all these areas. This one is slightly contested, but is slightly more favored towards the government. And the ones with three X's are completely under army nationalist control. How have we got enough time to select this one? 14 days. Yes, we do. That means this area will definitely 100% have our full control once the war does begin. All right, we go for support weapons one. So we are preparing for war. As you see, I'm going for ones that give us more soft attack on our army when the war does commence, which it will happen in seven days one zero it begins okay it's really important right now you select the right one because these will tell you which direction you want to go down there's three paths for the government the democratic path the stalinist path and the anarchist path and this is the one we're going to go for through the communal revolutionary struggle we will win and this is what we've got. This hasn't worked as smoothly as I would have planned, but might be a possibility of sealing up this land here and connecting them. We will definitely try, but there's not going to be any guarantees. So as you can see, all the areas we had full control of are completely under government control. No doubts about it. Full 100% control. These two in the north too, but this one, which was slightly contested by the nationalists, they've got, wow, almost full control of this area, which is kind of sad. We've got control of the garrisons, but it looks like most of the land is fully under army control. So let's just see what we can pull off here and see if we can do any funny shenanigans. So what I'm going to do first of all is select all of you guys and give it to a guy who's got lots and lots of defense. He looks pretty good. Three defense and he's also got Impetrigly that gives him an extra 10% defense. What I'm going to do with you guys is just make a four battle line so we can defend the mountain area. And we need to lock onto these victory points and the port so we hold them as long as possible. Do the exact same with this one too. Trying to capture at least three areas. And all these guys will be assigned to this four battle line. What I'm going to do with you is move one of you here here one of you here and the other one here and one of you guys will go here one of you guys go here what i'm gonna try and do is lock as many of these divisions in place and push out as quickly as possible what we could probably do with you is move you forward as well and see if we could just secure a little bit more land ideally we'd like to have a connected front line it's not always going to be possible i'm definitely going to give it a try like all of the extra divisions that have not been assigned if i just gonna shift left click on the unassigned divisions right click 48 division s to split we've got 23 23 beautiful now we're going to select two other armies we're going to go for more defensive ones again two brilliant strategists why not and once again two with infantry leader perfect what i'm going to do for the time being is you are not going to be connected so i'm going to pull you off and these two guys are going to be under a field marshal what we got he'll do i will not be pronouncing his name oh my goodness and i'm going to do z front line with the field marshal and x to draw a front line so what will happen all these divisions will shimmy forward and move forward and hopefully we get them into position where we need them to be i'm going to railroad this guy to here i'm going to attack him and i'll move you here might be able to get a little opportunity for an encirclement in these areas potentially we'll see and what we'll also do is see if we can shimmy forward as well and potentially get these areas closed down as well that looks pretty good right look pretty damn good all right so there are all the orders we plan to do we're going to go into decisions now and uh i think first of all we'll go for war bonds i think that gives us an extra civilian factory to play with which will build up more factories in valencia i think we've already built two that's right extra two military factories so remember those are going to go to the anarchists when we rise up against ourselves yeah that's the way this game works all right we need to rush towards masters of our own fate we need to rise up against the government and form our governmentless society so to do this we need to work our way down and i must admit this part of the focus tree is a little bit confused you need to go for arm the people then uh, then the means of production then the maximum concession and then secure gold reserves and then masters of our own fate so one two three four five okay arm the people first do not spend your political power do not spend it when a civil war happens the guns and the divisions are for the most part split equally in half now there are exceptions to that rule based on focuses and other bits and pieces in this civil war it's quite complex but one thing that doesn't get split is political power so you can carry your political power over from spain to republican spain to anarchist spain so hold on to it as much as possible the one exception being war bonds because we get to build more military factories, which is always good. All right, let's move you guys here. And I think we are good to go, I think. Let's go three speed and let's just see what happens. Yeah, they've got divisions here. By the looks of things, we're not going to be able to move forward. And they've pinned our guy in already. There's a jolly big nuisance. And I'm going to be pinning their divisions as well. Now we're going to focus everything that's going to give us more soft attack. So anything that results in soft attack is going to be a win situation. And of course, oh damn, we need radio too. Radio, very, very important. I'm going to move you into 
into here, you into here, and then here. We try and lock down as many divisions as we can. I'm also going to select all the army, and I'm going to go Control B to railroad them the front line to make sure every single division gets where they need to be as quickly as possible. Okay, we've got Soviet volunteers. We're going to accept those because they will do some crazy legwork when it comes down to their attacking ability. We've got an ability to encircle one division here, so go for that. I'll admit, if you want to get more experience of encircling in Hearts of Iron 4, and get better at your micro this is kind of where you do it this is the staging ground this is how you pull it off and uh yeah by the looks of things the south has gone really well we've split off this area and we're going to control it now fortunately the idea of connecting the two front lines though is looking more and more and more unlikely so for the time being i think we'll just call it and just say this is the land that we control and just hold on for this as long as we can any small opportunities for encirclement for instance here i just take that opportunity and just grab it every single division that we can take off the nationalist is going to be massive oh look at here as well another encircling opportunity i will definitely take that oh and he moves in just in time lucky boy there will be a few gaps in the front line to begin with so my advice to you is always move into those gaps because it's always going to be worthwhile and there we go civil war front lines solidify this means now whenever we attack into enemy territory we will suffer from a massive attack penalty of 90 percent and a speed reduction of 75 percent it is pretty painful to avoid that you've got to go in decisions and actually plan your offensives the areas to me that look like I can crack them open and split them half is probably here. So I'm going to go for that opportunity. And I'll move you here, move you here. I think we probably can go all the way across. Can we do that? That'd be really cool if we could. Here, here. Always cover your flanks, though. Don't move forward unless you know you can cover your own back. If you can't, you're going to be in a world of hurt. The Italian and German volunteers are more than likely on their way. So one thing I will say to you is be aware that you are digging into these specific areas here and here. These areas need to be locked down because otherwise the nationalists will be able to fuse the pies and you'll not get the advantage against the nationalists when you are anarchist you are looking way ahead on your strategy okay so some of these blue divisions here that are not connected up with the northern ones i'm just going to grab them i'm going to delete you and then we'll connect them up with the main army too many here so we'll s to split and move them down here and there we go that's a pretty much nice divide to be honest with you i know they're a little bit over but it's not a big penalty anyway the opportunity for an encirclement here so i am definitely going to take it i'm going to be very careful of my own troops when i push them forward as you can see there's an opportunity to get encircled here so i'm pushing back and pulling back this guy as well is not underneath this field march i'll shift him under and he'll gain the bonuses which is offensive doctrine and aggressive assaulter also this guy starts off with the infantry leader which is awesome because he gives 10 percent attack but we have the ability to go for ambusher you'll notice this gives him more entrenchment an extra i think about eight percent more or maybe maybe about ten percent more i don't know a lot of entrenchment put it that way one of the advantages of splitting the ai in half like for instance securing here or securing here and here is the ai has a really hard time knowing where to position most of its troops it can't quite calculate where is the most ideal location to defend against so when you've got that in mind you can know you can split them in half and do a lot of damage to them they'll do silly things like abandon their whole front line which is pretty stupid but the moment all i'm going to do is dig in and we're going to try and take out this encircled division here and this one another advice to you is try and keep a close eye on the german tank divisions like he's gone for the north they always push into the north which is good because they're trying to push into mountains tanks in mountains hmm does that work hmm let me know below we've also got our navy we'll assign an admiral and we'll pop the navy here so what will happen is if they do to attack these two territories the result of that is they'll have to deal with the shore bombardment penalty it won't be much it'll probably only be about five percent reduction to their attack ability but better than nothing so what i do is i keep Keep a close eye on these attacking divisions in the north here and keep an eye on how long it'll take them to fall. Now, this will take 650 days to fall. So in this case, just don't worry about it. Just keep a close eye because you might see some of these bubbles go red. In this case, they might win within 70 days. Once again, that's not something to worry about. So just sit tight and you'll be fine for now. You'll be fine. I can go four speed now and just have a quick look at the battlefield and just make sure there's any micro situations. Keep a close eye on everything to make sure no area falls. Now, you can lose the odd tile one or two for instance if a german tank's attacking some planes you more than likely can just give up that land anyway like for it potentially they can move a division into here so i just want to block them from doing that this guy is on his way here so i don't want him to move forward these areas are secure in the north so that's good will he arrive in time yes no yes he's defending that's good all right this guy's infantry leader too and i'm going to go for ambusher for the extra plus five entrenchment the first phase is to defend 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 the nationalists have more attacking divisions with their army of africa which is lovely division that uh, consist of, I think they look like 
this, and then he hits this. This is it, which has lots of soft attacks so they can break through. If you look really close, you can find the army of Africa. Oh, there we go. That's an army in Africa. That one. And of course, they've got the German tank divisions too, which have got lots of pushback. So you play it kind of defensively to begin with. Oh, there's the shore bombardment, and it is affecting them by 1.8%. Wow. Division has been encircled here, and this guy is next. Low supply. Encircled penalty. In multiple combats. No supply. It's not looking good, my dude. Not looking good. Oh, looks like we've taken a victory point here. That's good. Move forward, boys. We might be able to secure Western Aragon if we take out this victory point here. Oh, what is happening here? Italian assault. All right, I'm going to go for improve the machine tools. We want to see if we can get that production as high as possible. Things are looking pretty good, though, at the moment. On the people is done. Now we're going to go for appropriate the means of production. What could this mean? All right, this area is looking red. Let's have a little look. I know he's doing fine now, so that's good. Just keep a close eye on everyone to make sure everything's looking pretty sweet. And this is looking amazing. We've not lost a single territory in the center and we've encircled two nationalist divisions. This is looking pretty damn sweet. So you've got the Air Force as well. It won't make much of a difference. It's just looking into key areas where you might need it most. So if you can see, for instance, this area is about to fall. You just can move it over to this area and get a little bit of air superiority. I think you're actually better where they actually were. All right, we're going to rush forward now and get some more support weapons for the extra breakthrough and defense. I always forget to do this and let's plan another offensive in Western Aragon. Just looking for areas that we potentially will push into at some point. And in this case, this area is mainly controlled by the Nationalists. So let's grab it and go for it now. Okay, this area looks like it's under strain. It's showing red. Let's move our Air Force over. We'll grab a single division and just retreat him back to the mountains. And there we go. That looks good. We're also going to rush improve infantry equipment one. The maximum concession, which reduces our war support. Madness. Okay, this guy's not looking too good. So I'm going to grab one of the divisions and retreat him back. Going nine days. And it's come to 65. Five days. There we go. Defended. The more land that you control as a Republicans, the better off you are when you fire the Anarchy Civil War. So this is a beautiful place to begin when we fire our little stateless uprising. It looks like these are about to break. So let's reinforce with a single division. Will we get there in time? And we have. There we go. That pesky German tank. Next focus. Seize the gold reserves. After machine tools, I'm going to go for improved artillery. I understand this is way ahead of schedule, but hey, Bebop loves his artillery. Hmm? Yes? Yes, he does. More war bonds. And now we've built a total of three military factories in Valencia. This will become very, very important later on. We'll make sure we build a few more if we need to. All right, we've seized the gold reserves, and now we're going to go masters of our own fate. The Stalinists and their Republican puppets increasingly infringe upon our freedoms, systematically undermining our efforts and eliminating prominent supporters of our cause. Enough is enough. We are the masters of our own fate, even if it means fighting them to go. Three, two, one, and here we are. The government cracked down. In their inability to compromise, the government has effectively placed us in the state of war with them. And in so doing has greatly strengthened the nationalist position. Our revolution will not be so easily exhausted. So as you can see, we kind of like split them directly in half. And for the most part, this is what we control. Now, if we're lucky, we might be able to snag Madrid. Let's select our generals. We're going to go for you, Linda, because you're adaptable. Very, very strong. And we're also going to go with you because you are an infantry leader. What I'm going to do is delete all the front lines. Just delete them all because they're all incredibly messy. And drop a new front line here. Press H to stop what they're doing. And then we're going to resume. And when they all move, I'm going to control B to railroad them to where I want them to go. For instance, for you, I need you to railroad and take Valencia because that's where all our lovely factories that we built. And we want those back. First thing we need to do as well is we need to hire the infantry genius. That's right. Anarchist Spain gets an infantry genius. And he doesn't even have a name. He's just called the Infantry Military Council. Everything will be replaced with councils. Focus-wise, straight away, we need to go for foreign arms purchases. The bonus of this is we can turn political power into raw guns. And it tends to be incredibly effective. So we're going to shift that to the very top and only have one gun in weapons. Now, the reason we've got so few military factories is because they're all in Valencia. And there's also a bunch in Madrid as well. So we need to grab those immediately. As you can see, that everyone is railroaded and we'll go three speed to slowly move them to where we need them to be. I don't think the government has many troops in Valencia, so I'm just going to grab that, eat it up immediately. And we might actually be able to grab this southern area as well. I don't think there are any divisions here. No, I don't think there are, so we just eat that up as well. Nice. We can also plan an offensive, and we'll go for Madrid just to make sure we do secure it. I think we might be able to grab it here. It looks like we probably will. Go for it immediately, and you should be able to snag it straight away. Ah, they have one division in Valencia. That is really frustrating. And we have have grabbed Madrid 
has gone exactly to plan and we've gained two military factories from that too and we've got control of Valencia so look at this all those military factories back into my hands so we need to make a division now one that we're going to use for the front line uh actually first of all we've just dropped some more military factories there there we go so we don't have to worry about those civvies division that we can go for probably this one but we'll change this to reconnaissance and we'll take off a few divisions so we're going to go for numbers we'll fill out the front lines with lots of divisions then we'll focus on more attacking divisions so we'll go for elite we'll give it a different icon are we the baddies and we'll train a bunch of them how many can we get oh we can get 12 of them well 11 but we'll, we'll call that 12 wink wink it looks like we pinned him in here so we'll eventually break him down and everyone else seems to be doing incredibly well we've captured all the areas we need to we practically hold all the areas the republicans did hold anyway so moving into here right now and just gobbling up all this land remember when you play this it probably will look differently because different parts of different areas of land will be taken you just have to improvise that's right guys just play with what you've got i believe in you right now we've got foreign arms purchases we can convert that from political power to a thousand guns so 25 political power over 20 days will give us a thousand guns so what does that mean that means we just don't need to care about guns anymore but i'll just assign one just for the time being and what we're gonna do is just work down our focus tree sadly this focus tree may look massive but half of these focuses we can't go for anyway so the path down here is pretty linear. Let's go for this one that gives extra 5% factory output. Right, there's a few areas that are looking a little bit flimsy on the front line. So I'm just going to back up a little bit and just make sure those areas are secure. I don't want to end up losing divisions because the front line is incredibly flimsy as it is. And we've got German tank division here causing us a lot of problems. Right, these divisions are ready. We'll deploy these here on the front line and we'll break them off into a separate army. New army go here with a new general as well as these divisions. Divisions will all move where they need to go. Set front line, control and B, railroad away. And there we go. Off they go. The front line now will be a little bit less flimsy. As long as we hold on to the key victory points, therefore we'll get access to all of these factories such as Valencia, Madrid, and Barcelona. All right, what I need to do is move this front line all the way here and put you all the way here. Don't want to maneuver the front lines too much as it stands because we're going to have issues with them wiggling around the front line and we don't want that to happen because it's going to mean they deorg and move around too much. But we will move them around and control B to move them to a different part of the front. This looks okay for now. What's concerning though is the German and Italian divisions, which are the strongest divisions by the Nationalists, are pushing on our front lines. What we need to happen now is desperately for the Carlists to uprise. Therefore, to provide it as a distraction, which will happen more than likely in probably the next few weeks. All right, let's rush concentrated three. And also, don't forget to keep pressing this button. Magical button that you cost 25 political power and makes a thousand guns appear out of thin air. And there we go. The Carlists have broken away. <laughs> Splitting the Nationalists in half. Oh, this is so good. I love it. And uh, they're stuck on their little island here. Uh, okay. Are we going to get a strong Carlist or a weak Carlist? I don't even know. But the beautiful news is the nationalists are now split three ways here here and here there's a little gap in the front line here so i'm just gonna just tiptoe into it i've got the opportunity to do it so why not take advantage of that right and of course these carlists have been very silly here by spawning right in the middle of the battleground very very silly so we'll get rid of those now in the melee and all the craziness it looks like uh, madrid has fallen maybe we could encircle this one division here are you gonna be silly and let us just take you yes we are <laughs> I love this game. What you'll notice is when the Carlists rise up is you'll find there'll be lots of gaps in the front lines. Tiptoe very slowly forward. My advice is don't overextend because you're going to find yourself getting encircled. So don't let that happen. That's going to cause a lot of problems. And this in the bottom here is causing me a lot of issues because I'm going to have to dedicate so many, divi many divisions to pushing this back. And this is also frustrating as well. Not what I want to see. F for the single division duck in Catalonia. Opportunity here just to walk into a victory point. Yeah, don't mind if I do. Move here and you move here. Here. There's lots and lots of gaps in the front line here. I'm just a bit a nervous how weak this is looking here. By the looks of things though, it looks like the Nationalists here are having a really hard time with supply. Two supply and they're getting airdrop supply. The Nationalists have built a transport plane? Interesting. It looks stupid here, but there's just so many gaps in this front line. I have to take advantage of it. Attack, go, everyone be aggressive. This seems pretty silly because more than likely we'll not be able to push here, but all these areas to the west, we have to take them. It's just free real estate. So just grab it, get it, get it while it's hot. Got the option here to grab some more victory points off the Nationalists. So just grab it while you can. And we're also going to make our way towards this, which gives an extra 3% recruitable, which is always going to be useful because right now manpower is becoming a bit of an issue. All right, we can stop attacking now. By the looks of things, we're in a position we can't push anymore anyway. Go here. 
here, pause, go here, and pause. This area is looking really bad for the Nationalists. One supply, and there's like, ooh, at least 10 divisions here. With the Italian and the German ones. And we've finally broken this, and this is just, just about to break as I reinforce it with some more divisions. Finally, done. And we can railroad them all to the front line, and the front line now should be really thick. And you have one supply in the mound. I don't know where you're getting it from, but what a lad. What a lad. And don't forget about this. Purchase infantry equipment. A thousand guns for free. Don't mind if I do. So what have we got going on here? We have the Republicans, which consists of just this state. That's it. And we have the Nashers that control most of the western area of Spain. A little, tiny little bit to the east. And then we've got the Carlists just bogged down in the mountains. It's not looking too good. So definitely the Nationalists are looking the strongest right now. But then again, this eastern bit here with all their strongest volunteers seem to be deorging right now. Oh no. The Carlists have been defeated. Which is surprising because they actually owned a lot of land. But now it is just a tiny fragment of the Republicans and the massive Nationalists. Which actually makes me a little bit sad because by the looks of things, it looks like we're going to encircle most of this. Maybe if we push into it right now, that might be an opportunity. Could we do it? They have zero supply. Oh, we've been circled them. I think I'm going to push too. The, the, a lot of divisions are shuffling around the front line. I'm going to go for another unified push. And there we go. They are locked in with zero supply. So they are slowly deorging, destroyed. Oh, German tank division. Portuguese volunteers too decimated the second republic has been defeated the beauty of this too is every time one of the sides one of the factions falls we're rewarded with all their guns and we've got a lot of guns now so don't forget to keep pressing purchase infantry equipment to make a thousand guns magically appear out of thin air all right let's stop attacking now pause these northern divisions definitely need to stop because they're not going anywhere the ones in the center though are doing quite well so we'll just leave them to push now we can go for this for more recruitable pop oh no what has happened spanish Civil War, Italian, German volunteers stuck in the hills of Catalonia. Gone. Oh, and look, some more. Gone. All right, now we're on position. We're going to H to hold and then control B to get everyone to the front line. Oh, look at them all. Miraculously jump to the front line. And oh, look, uh, an encircled nationalist division. Oh, you're so silly. Maybe you can train a few more divisions in the back, make sure they're low priority, and then we'll drop them off one. Six will do for now. And then we need to make sure we get some more free guns. And we'll also go for improved artillery upgrade too. And upgrade these guys even more. We'll probably just mix this up a little bit more now. That looks pretty good to me. Lots of stronger up-to-date artillery as well as feeding the front line with guns. Most of our guns though will come from the decision anyway. But we'll just make a few just to reinforce what we have. Oh, is this a gap in the front line? A possible opportunity to push to the front? Let's take this opportunity. Oh, is he going to do it? And has he split them in half? Are we going to get confused AI? And we have GG boys. G to the G. So what you probably notice now is the front line to the north or the south, one or the other, will get really confused and they'll start shuffling divisions around. With that opportunity, you can do a lot of damage. And encircled. Another one bites the dust. What's this? Italian divisions. Italian volunteers messing up. How historically accurate. Another opportunity for encirclement. And I am definitely 100% going to take it. Oh, they've encircled me. The whole switcheroony. Okay, I'll take that. Go here, then go here, then go here. And you're encircled. The way you win the Spanish Civil War easily is just looking for gaps in the front line and walking around the divisions. There's always the issue in Hearts of Iron Falls, but there's just lack of divisions on the front line to hold and where you just magically walk into the front. Wonderful how that happens, isn't it? Oh, as I just walk forward in the south here with no resistance whatsoever. Front line is not looking too strong anymore. And it looks like the AI has been defeated in the south. They are moving around a little bit and being really annoying. So I'm just going to attack and put them on aggressive. And I'll be able to pin the divisions in and move the ones around that I want to move around. And if we lock them all in place and encircle them, we'll do lots of damage. Yeah, that looks good. Now they're all pinned in place. Just based on the numbers advantage that I was able to do that. This looks like practically the end. Collectivization of workers control. More factory output. And this is the end. Hey, did I tell you about the free guns? Probably bored of hearing this, right? Clearing up the south and push more into the north. Whoa! And Germans have sent a medium tank division. Desperate much. And it has been encircled. The speed advantage has been lost. All right, I'm just going to hold ground for just a little while because I don't want to end this too quickly. I want them to hold on to just a few victory points. Why, you ask? Why, you ask? You already know why. So I can press this button a lot of times and get free guns. Duh. All must bear the torch. Every person is a revolution unto itself. If not for the bravery and ferocity of the individual, the collective would fall in the face of its enemies. The message must be brought home with all of our supporters. Every single one of us must aid in holding high the torch of anarchism. Let's go.
So this is the part where we store the Civil War for as long as possible so we can press this button as many times. Yeah, this is pretty sad, but welcome to exploits. Welcome to Feedback Gaming. I hope you enjoyed the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, boy, maybe girl. Uh, these divisions we're not going to use, so we can just delete those off now. There we go. We are done. Well, I didn't vote for you. Keep a very close eye at the top of the screen of how much towards capitulation the final part of Spain is. Because ideally, in a perfect world, you want to be able to press this button a thousand times and get a thousand free guns. Because it's just a really easy way of spitting out guns for free. But who actually wants to make their own guns, right? That's just boring. Get them for free. Trade PP for free guns out of thin air. It's magical. Do you want me to go further? Do you want to see a world conquest as the anarchist? No problem. 200,000 subscribers and it will be done. This is your chance to see the world conquest as the global defense council. You know what to do. The button is below. Currently, guys, ad revenue has tanked. The lockdown has totally frozen the YouTube economy. If you want to help me out, the best thing you can do in these dire times is become a patron. The link is in the description below. Thank you, boys and girls. Bye-bye.